Draw a single motion diagram for a car traveling at a regular pace down a street. Ahead of the car, a couple students are crossing the street and the driver presses on the brake and the car slows down. After the students cross, the driver hits the gas and the, and the car travels back at the same regular pace. All right, for this, we have a picture of a car right here. It's a beautiful, fancy car. Um, one thing we need to do before we start anything is we need to put in a reference point. So I'm going to here call this my origin. I'm going to call to the right positive and then to the left negative. So now we have a reference frame set up. We know we know where the origin is. We know the car started away from the origin uh, towards the positive numbers and left is going to be negative. All right, the next step will to will be to represent um, this as a motion diagram. Alright, so the car is traveling at a regular pace down the street. So we're going to represent that with arrows of roughly the same length. I apologize if my handwriting is terrible here. This is V1, V2, and V3. Okay, then a couple students are crossing the street, the driver presses the brake. So I'm going to just represent a change in that motion by a vertical dotted line, and then use arrows to show the car pressing the brake. So if it's braking, it's going to be reducing its speed, decreasing its velocity. So I have three more arrows here, V4, V5, V6, we can see clearly that they're getting smaller, so the car is slowing down. Once the students cross, the driver hits the gas, and the car travels back at the same regular pace. All right, so it's going to take some time to get back to that regular pace. So V7, the car gets faster. V8, it's getting close to that pace. And then V9, back at the original pace. So we'll label these V7. V8 and V9. All right, now that we have all the velocity arrows, we'll look at the change in velocity. Since it's a constant speed for the first three arrows, we have the change in velocity is zero. Now we see that our arrows are going to the right but decreasing, so the change in velocity, all right, if I look at the fifth arrow and compare it to the fourth arrow, it got smaller, which means I would have to add a smaller arrow to the fourth going in the opposite direction or to the left to get the fifth. So my change in velocity is going to be to the left. Now uh, we see at the end it's the arrows are getting larger, so my change in velocity here will be to the right. Now I have a full-blown motion diagram with the appropriate signs and reference point. So now we can work on graphing this. All right, so now we're going to translate this to a position versus time graph. We see that the car doesn't start at zero. It starts um, in the positive uh, in the positive position. So our graph is not going to begin at zero. It's going to begin above zero. And it's traveling at a constant speed in the positive direction, which would be reflected by a uh, straight diagonal line on a position versus time graph with a positive constant slope. So here we have that car for the first three seconds traveling at a constant positive velocity. Now at this time the car is still traveling in the positive direction however it's slowing down which means this constant positive slope is going to get less steep. So for the next few seconds it is going to kind of slow down a little bit that you can see that and that the slope is getting less and less steep. Now the students pass and the car is now getting faster so it's going to continue in the positive direction but it's going to the slope is going to going to increase. And now we have three parts to our graph. We have the first part which is constant velocity the second part, which is 
velocity that is decreasing, but decreasing in the positive direction. The slope here is still positive, it's getting shallower. Now the slope is once uh, now the slope is getting steeper and traveling faster and faster in the positive direction. All right, so now we're going to translate this to a velo uh, velocity versus time graph. Since the car is traveling in the positive direction, the velocity is going to be a constant positive velocity at the start. It'll be a non-zero value, and since the arrows don't change size, the number of the the magnitude of the velocity will not change either. So you, on a velocity versus time graph, you get a straight horizontal line for that portion. Okay, sorry about that. Now the second part of this, the car is still traveling in the positive direction. The velocity, the velocity errors are getting smaller. So since the velocity errors are getting smaller, but they're still pointing to the right, velocity is still positive. However, it just decreases. All right, so <clears throat> should be a little bit more point there, but the velocity goes down, and then towards the end, it's going to go back up to the original speed the original velocity that it had, and continue on. So this is what the velocity versus time graph should look like for part D, or I should say part E. Um, if you guys have any questions, shoot me an email. Uh, sorry this one was a little rusty. It's the first one of the year, but um, like I said, if you guys have any questions on the homework, please shoot me an email.